Okay, hi everybody, it's Carl at Escape Trailer, and today is a short video. Notice I said the word short, because it is short, a short video on how a person or a dealer or a service person will remove and replace the SDS2 cooktop. We do this in 16 minutes, and we're not breaking a sweat. There's a stopwatch in the top left-hand corner, and you can watch that stopwatch run as we work our way through. If you're taking your SDS cooktop into an organization to have it replaced, and maybe they're not quite unsure about how long it's gonna take, and they're telling you it's gonna take an hour or two hours or three hours, or they're gonna to have to tear the kitchen apart or, or whatever, then you know we can help educate them. So help educate them by giving them the link to this video. Now, arguably, this is the most challenging escape to do it in because we do it in the Escape 17, which has the furnace located directly beneath the cooktop. I do imagine if you're doing it in any of our other trailers, it will be even faster. Let's roll the video with Dave. Okay, folks, I'm just going to do a quick video here to show you uh, what's involved with uh, changing out the Suburban cooktop. Um, I'm just strictly changing a Suburban with a Suburban. I'm not doing a Dometic. Um, but just to give you an idea uh, what's involved, even if you're going to take it to an RV repair facility, then you'll know uh, kind of what they're talking about, and uh, you can make your choices from there. First thing I've done, we're in a customer's trailer here, so... Uh, first thing I've done is I've made sure that the propane is off. Now this is a 17B, so there's no real easy way to get underneath uh, these screws without taking off the, uh, the furnace cover. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do right now. So we just pop these caps here. And then behind those is a Robertson screw. So we'll just take that off. Like so. Top and bottom. Okay, now this just, this guy's just comes off there. Okay, so now I can get my hands in there and I can kind of hold stuff. So from that point, we'll go to the top here. You'll open your cooktop and you'll have these little rubber caps in here. Take those off. Okay. Then underneath, you'll see a Phillips screw. Goes out. They don't have to come out all the way. There's just a little brace underneath. So we're just loosening it so that brace will turn. And you'll see it when I pull it out here. I'm just holding it with my hand. This is the tricky one on the 17s. Furnace in there. And I'll see if that should pop out. Just like so. So then once you got it loosened, you'll be able to lift this out a bit. So you can see these plastic tabs here, they go up, up on the bottom of the uh, countertop. So that's what was holding it in. So as I loosened it, they come down and turn so you can lift up and pull out. So we're going to have a gas line here. And it'll be on this side. So it's kind of a bear to get at on these little ones. And then we got a positive here, positive and a negative wire that we'll take out, and that is for the igniter on there. So I'll take that out first, because I seem to be a little restricted there. Then I have a little electrician's tape to put on the, uh, the positive side, or the red wire, because if that grounds out, you'll blow a fuse. So if it doesn't spark, once you get it all back hooked up, check your fuses. Get that ready to go. I'll bend this one back because it's garbage. Those will just slip out once you get it undone. There's my positive wire. Just taping it up so it doesn't short out.
Let me get tape. And the negative one out. Okay. So now that our 12 volt wires are off, now we shall get the gas line off, which is going to be kind of hard for you to see, Harrison, at the back, just because of the angle and the small trailer. So try and do it where a position where you can see. So I use a crescent wrench on the valve body here and a three quarter inch on the nut. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So you might have a little bit of residual gas in the lines if you smell that, but if you've turned off your gas, there shouldn't be an issue. That is our old one taken out. So now we'll get the new one. So here's the new one that Suburban has sent this customer. So what I noticed on this, and probably some of you have had this um, heat plate fall off, is I tightened those two screws. I found them to be a little bit loose. Um, so obviously you don't want it falling off. So just make sure you tighten those up um, so it stays up in there. So what we'll do here is I'll take the little tabs off. Make sure that screws are loose so when we go to put it in. Screwdriver. Make sure that we can move those around. Now we're ready to drop that in once we get everything hooked up. The first thing I want to do is hook up the gas. So you got a little safety cover on here. Roll it forward a bit. You don't need any uh, Teflon tape or pipe sealant or anything on there. It's, it's flared. Really good. Okay. So now that I have that on there, I'm going to go turn on the propane and we're going to squirt some soapy water on there and just make sure that we have no leaks. I'll be back in a sec. So now I'm just going to spray some soapy water around here and look for bubbles. And there's no bubbles. So I know we got a good good seal and it's tight enough on there. And there's your gas side of it. It's all hooked up. So now we just have to hook up our 12 volt wires. So we'll have ignition. They originally hooked this up. There was no furnace in there, so they can get their hands in there. We don't have that luxury. Thanks. <laughs> What's that? It's yeah. shaky. Yeah, <laughs> so <Sounds> good. <laughs> Maybe we can go this way a little bit. Hold it in there. And so there's our the positive. Now I've got the negative. To come my way a bit this way. So 
a little tug. Looks like we're good. Before I install it, I'll just lift this up a bit. And I can hear it sparking, so I know that I've got the power going there. We'll turn that there. This little guy will go in here. So I'm just lining up those little tabs, like I said, on all four corners, and then we'll screw this down and that brings those tabs up on the bottom of the countertop. So do this guy first. Let's tighten it down. You don't have to go really tight because they are plastic tabs. You just don't want them to move. Reach in under here. That one's backed out along me. This one's up, this one's up there. With this back one on the 17, sometimes if you can get that little bracket sticking out and then tuck it in, then you don't have to hold it as much it's really hard to get your hand in on that one. And that's it, it's installed. So, let's see what we got there. First time turning it on, you're gonna have air in the lines, like so. So now I don't have to shave my arms anymore. <laughs> There we go. It's all installed. You're good to go. Now we'll just put our um, furnace cover back on. A couple minutes there, two screws, and you're done. One thing that I almost forgot there is once you get everything all tightened down, um, these little black grommets that we took out to get at the screws, just put them back in. They are notorious for falling and losing them, but they just add a little cover there. And that's it. And there you go. So escape trailers built for you.